Sisi Onyame Masomo
why they did my womb. It's just a funny boy, boy, in a refrigerator, young boy, the big boy. Cause I will move frosty, I will move your rainbow. Cause I will the devil, the frosty, the man who will bring you around. Now be your dog, now be bad, some poor your dog. Now move my head, cause it's a rain on your dog. It's just a body boy born in a refrigerator Young boy, young me boy Kai wu mo frasi Kai wu ya remu Kai wu di demu Na fasi da manu a brim ya ro Nyami ya do Nyami ba tsam pa ya do Na mo ma yen ko Ladies and gentlemen, the Jubilee Choir, they are yours for the applause. Once my lecturer, he said that the greatest, Ghanaian to the, the greatest problem to the Ghanaian society was time and calendar. But I believe since he became head of civil service, it has turned out well for Ghana. Ladies and gentlemen, please give yourselves a round of applause for this impressive turnout. Dr. Evans Agridako, I greet you well. My name is Jerry Ajololo. I'm a proud student of our father, the late Emeritus Professor Kwame Jechi, and it's with all joy that I stand before you to offer my service as the master for this ceremony. Sincerely, we must apologize for the late start of today's event. Clearly, we can blame it on the weather and its subsequent you know, effects. But I promise you that once the President of the Republic gets here in exactly 10 minutes, everything will proceed on time, on point, and on message. We have everything here to make your stay warm, comfortable, and safe. You may reach any of our ushers for water to keep you hydrated. We have the restrooms. To the left, we have the men, because to the right, the ladies are always right. We are not going to argue about that. Any other thing we can do to make your stay here extra special, please. I'm yours truly, Jerry Ajololo, and with my host of ushers, we're yours to command. While we still wait, Jubilee Kwa, we're all yours. Thank you. Asoro, asoro ya wuti, asasi ya wuti, ohi ya ranti se. Oh, asoro, asoro ya wuti, asasi ya wuti, ohi ya ranti se. Oh, di wo hino, di wo hino, di wo hina pa, di wo hini, oh di wo hino. Sorrow, yeah, 
yawuto osoro yawote asase yawote ohe biara se sewo osoro yawote asase yawote ohe biara se sewo yanso di wo hino ohele di wo hene di wo hene yanso di wo hino Montaya into Montsoya into more Christ for Ribor. Montaya into more Christ for Ribor. Montaya into more Montaya into Christ for Ribor. Montaya into more Christ for Ribor. Yeah, but so, 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 yeah, Nam Cobenina, Yenam Cobenina, Yamini, and Yamini, and O Henevi Sazo, Henevi Sazo, O Beno, Yamso, Tensi, Yasi. Jesus, <laughs> Yamini Hennam Hennebi Sazina Obey no Yabota Demti Yajidi Den Yami Bey Obey a mouse Ujita Yami Beyama, O Tehemto, Demti, Yashiti, Yami Beyer, O Beyama, Sewuchita, Yami Beyama, O Hosseta, O Hosseta, O Mitojita, Yesu. Lo lo ni 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 
Tawun 
Bejuni, Ekwana Milie Mawo, Waye Iri Sada Adumri. Ekchumbe na mento, Asabe na mensa, Asembe na mika Adumri. Nyawo de ma Bejuni, Ekwana Milie Mawo, Waye Iri Sada Adumri. Ekchumbe na mento, Asabena minsa, asabena minka tumre. Nyawo dima be juni, denka na minya ma wo. Waye yiri sadat. Oh, ejumbe, ejumbe na minsa, asabena minsa, asabena minka tumre. Oh, nyami, nyami, ya boti, nyami, ya boti, ura, yeta, si, denina, umeni, nedi, yeru, si, denka, de, nyami, umwa, nyami, nyami, ya boti, nyami, ya boti, ura, yeta, si, denina, umeni, nedi, yeru, si, denka, de, nyami, umwa, oh, unkwa, ro, unkwa, ro, unkwa, ro, unkwa, ro, unkwa, ro, Jesus, Humbly, I invite you to join me up here, the Reverend Dr. Ibrahim Boati of the Trinity Theological Seminary, 
and the Accra Red Church. In the unbroken tradition of this house, we ask that we place all our phones on silent to avoid any interference in the course of this event. Thank you.
And now the national salute. of grace and the gift of life. We pray, O oh Lord, that you be with us through this wonderful program. May all be well to your glory. And Father, Lord, we pray that at the end, our glory will be to your name and the blessings will be upon us. We have prayed this in the name of Christ Jesus who taught us praying, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. And many thanks to you, the Reverend Dr. Abraham Boating of the Trinity Theological Seminary and of the Accra Ray Church for giving us a foundation in prayer. It is seven minutes past the hour five right here at the Great Hall of the University of Ghana, this great citadel of knowledge, from where I say good morning to you, our guest of honor, the President of our Republic, Nana Adudankwa Akufuado. Our special guest, the president, second president of our Fourth Republic, His Excellency John Ajekum Kufo, herein represented by his chief of staff, Dr. Edu Bofo. Your ladyship, Justice Sophia Kufo, former chief justice and chair of the University Council. Your lordship, Justice Yoni Kulendi, justice of the Supreme Court, soon to be introduced as our chairperson. Your ladyship, Justice Professor Henrietta Mensabonsu, justice of the Supreme Court. Chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Mrs. Jan Mensa, our Deputy Chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Dr. Bosman Asari, the Venerable Statesman, Scholar, and former President of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, Nana Professor SKB Asante, or Mahene of Asante Asokore, former Vice Chancellors, Professor Ernest Aite, Professor Clifford Niboitego, Professor Ivan Adaimensa, the Registrar of the University of Ghana, Mrs. Emilia. J. Mensa, former registrars, Mrs. Messi Hazel Ashia, and Mr. Teddy Konu, the president of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, Professor Kofi Opokunti, immediate past president, Professor Samuel Sefadede, vice president of the arts and science sections of the academy, Professor Achu Ayi, and Professor Isabella Kwachi, our guest speaker, Professor Martin Ode Eje, a fellow of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, the head of the civil service, Dr. Evans Agridako, distinguished fellows of the Academy of Arts and Sciences, the good and the great of the University of Ghana, pro-vice chancellors, registrar, faculty, staff, and students of the University of Ghana, our esteemed guests, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the maiden Kwame Jechi Memorial Lecture under the theme, The Forgetfulness of Citizenship. It's a very topical and relevant theme given the times we live in. My name is Jerry Ajololo, a proud old student of our beloved prof, and it is with great joy I accept this responsibility to be the master of the ceremony. Today, we're joined by many who have been touched by the life of our venerable emeritus professor, and it's our prayer that within two hours, 
we will all leave here renewed in our thinking of how we can contribute effectively to citizenship like he did. Welcoming us warmly on behalf of the department is the head of department philosophy and classics. Make welcome Professor Haskai Majid. Well, I stand on the established protocol to welcome you as head, Department of Philosophy and Classics, to the professor, to the Emeritus Professor Kwame Jachi Lecture, or Professor Kwame Jachi Memorial Lecture, which is taking place for the first time five years after his demise. It has taken the department this long to organize today's event because honoring the memory of a great person such as uh, Professor Jachi requires wide consultation, especially with the family, careful planning, and devotion of subst substantial material and intellectual resources. We are excited that the energy we have expended in realizing these has paid off as we envision a successful event this evening. We celebrate Emeritus Professor Jachi because of his immense contribution to the growth of the department and Akan philosophy. Jachi was a pioneer African philosopher who for four decades taught African philosophy and related courses to our students and popularized them through his numerous writings that were inspired by traditional Akan wisdom. Given the global reach and reception of his, of his works, Jachi also enhanced the image of Ghana and the University of Ghana. Indeed, he compared with the very best internationally, especially among African philosophers of his generation. Jachi's major works, such as the following, and I mentioned just four of them, are found in many libraries around the world. One is Tradition and Modernity, Philosophical Reflections on the African Experience, published by Oxford University Press in 1997. The award-winning an essay on African philosophical thought published by Cambridge University Press in 1987. The co-edited book, Person and Community, Ghanaian Philosophical Studies I, which was published by the Council for Research and Values in Philosophy in Washington, DC in 1992. The success of this book made the Council for Research and values in philosophy to team up with the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences to publish another book of Jachis in 20, uh, 2004. And the title of that book is Beyond Cultures, Perceiving a Common Humanity, Ghanaian Philosophical Studies III. Currently, Jachis' works are core texts for African philosophers and students, as well as any researchers who are interested in Akan philosophy. He is admired for his profound thoughts, clarity of expression, and skill in subjecting philosophical ideas to an Akan critique. Jachi is systematic in argumentation. In Akan philosophy, Jachi thoroughly debated his forerunners, particularly J.B. Dankwa, K.A. Buzia, and Kwasi Redu, who, in a sense, is his contemporary. Although Jachi builds upon the ideas, in some sense, he departs from them. 
For instance, <clears throat> on the question of Akan conception of personhood, <clears throat> Jachit takes these callers on for suggesting that a person's sum sum is either physical or quasi-physical. Jachi argues strongly that Akan cultural values and psychology rather support a metaphysical conception of Sun Sun since it is the subject of human experience and that a purely physical object cannot feel. In all this, Jachi demonstrates courage and belief in the objectivity and effectiveness of logic as a tool for intellectual engagement. The department has good memories of Jachi for the following reasons. That first, having spent all his professional life at the department, that is from 1969, when he was appointed lecturer to the year 2019, Jachi did not only train thousands of students, some of whom hold prominent positions around the world, but also he taught all except one of the existing full-time members of faculty in the philosophy section of the department. Second, his solid knowledge of Greek philosophy and language enabled him to teach courses in classics when classics and philosophy were separate departments. Hence, the two sections of the department found in Jachi the best example of how classics and philosophy converged. And this convergence seemed to be a justification for the coupling of the two disciplines of the department. Jachi's academic background went beyond Greek philosophy to ancient philosophy, oriental philosophy, metaphysics, ethics, logic, and political thought, making him one of the most complete thinkers of our time. Third, <clears throat> Jachi competently mentored all his students who joined him as faculty. And this largely accounts for the relative academic successes achieved by individual members of faculty and for the quality of service that the department provides for the university. Indeed, if Jachi had lived a little longer, he would have witnessed the induction of one of his trainees to the prestigious Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences. The Emeritus Professor Kwame Jachi Lecture Series have been instituted by the department to promote the intellectual legacy of Jachi by way of providing a platform for seasoned philosophers to deliver lectures on the application of his ideas to contemporary human problems. For this is what, according to Jachi, the mandate of a philosopher ought to be. I welcome you once again to today's lecture, which for us is in honor of a great thinker, a mentor, teacher, departmental historian, wise counselor, gentleman, and a world-class account philosopher. Thank you very much. I have a second task to perform, which is to invite the chairperson for this event to give us um, his uh, brief remarks. But this chairperson is an active justice of the Supreme Court of Ghana. He was nominated and appointed as appointed a Supreme Court judge in 2020. He was awarded his Bachelor of Laws degree in 1992 
from the University of Ghana. He continued at the Ghana School of Law, where he became a barrister of law in 1994. He holds a Master of Arts degree in International Security and Civil Military Relations from the Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey, California, United States. At his national service at the Legal Aid Board, he joined the Akufuado Prempe and Co. Chambers, where he, he underwent pupillage. He later founded his own law firm, Kulendi at Law, <coughs> where he worked as the firm's managing partner until his appointment to the bench. As a lawyer, his areas of expertise included investments, securities, commercial law, criminal law, and litigation. Justice Kulendi is a fellow of the inaugural class of the Africa Leadership Initiative West Africa and a member of the Aspen Global Leadership Network. He also served as an examiner at the Ghana School of Law. Justice Kulendi is married and a father of four children, and he considers himself a proud a product of the grace of God. Please join me to welcome His Lordship Justice Emmanuel Yoni Kulendi. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Uh, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana. Incidentally, my mentor, pupil, master, teacher, and first employer in life. True, he gave me my first job to train the evening of our call dinner as I walked out of law school. And so if I stand here of the human elements that has impacted my life, I have to acknowledge that all the time. Mr. President, I'm grateful. Um, Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Pro Vice Chancellor, Registrar of the University of Ghana, Deans and Directors of the schools, units and centers of the university, heads of departments, faculty members, former senior officials of the University of Ghana, president and fellows of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, Mrs. Joanna Jechi, and members of um, Prof. Jechi's family, faculty members, colleagues, students, invited guests, members of the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I extend to you my warm greetings. With all humility, I'm honored to be the beneficiary of this preeminent invitation. I accepted this invitation for several reasons. One, the privilege to be part of the platform to celebrate a philosopher of global standing whose work brought telling influence on states, communities, and individuals. Two, the honor to sit at the table of intellectuals and share thoughtful reflections over the impact, influence, and legacy of Professor Jechi. Three, the greatest opportunity to visit home, the philosophy department, where I was a student, and be part of a lecture on a topic that I deeply cherish, citizenship. Though I did not major in philosophy, my brief stint in the department offered useful and valuable insight that has since anchored my appreciation and application of legal jurisprudence, which has guided my journey as a legal practitioner and now as a judge. Again, I must acknowledge that in his capacity as convener of the Epochal Ghana at 50 lectures, Professor Jechi identified my potential, even then as a young lawyer, and recommended me for the unprecedented opportunity to feature as one of the panel of speakers in that August event. 
On account of these reasons, among others, I find this to be both an honor and a privilege to be asked to chair this lecture. While expressing my personal deepest appreciation to the organizers for this invitation, I should express my expectation that we will leave this lecture with the benefit of the orthodox analytical approach of the philosopher to the important subject of citizenship and related matters. Before I resume my seat, permit me to make a few comments about Professor Kwame Jechi, in whose memory we are gathered today. In honoring Professor Jechi, we are reminded of a fundamental lesson that transcends the confines of academia and resonates deeply with the human experience. It is a lesson that underscores the intrinsic value of education, not merely as a collection of facts and theories, but a catalyst for meaningful action and societal transformation. Today, I am reminded of the foundational principles that anchored the life and legacy of Professor Jechi. He gave us a sense of belief that we should neither discount the individual nor exclude the community in our determination of values in a society or state. As an avowed communitarian, he believes that the community is ontologically prior to the individual. However, Prof. Jechi rejects the moral subordination of the individual to the community. Describing his position as moderate communitarianism, Prof. Jechi insists on ascribing to the individual and the community the status of equal moral standing. The ideas of Prof. Jechi and the reference in our current republic might help avoid the extremes of individualism and communitarianism. The community spirit is required to keep the individual, and the individual needs the community, not only for identity, but also for protection, companionship, and a strong sense of belonging. Notwithstanding his prolonged studies in Europe, Prof. Jechi never lost touch with the communitarian philosophy and context of his beginning. It was alive, current, influential, and active in his research and writing. As a legal system with an aspiration to develop law that matters to the welfare campaign of our people, we cannot disregard our culture and values. At the very least, judges cannot avoid the methodology of interpretation that will allow the republic see law in its best moral light. Even the crude and strict literalists would agree that law has certain internal law has a certain internal moral sense. In that light, law should not be conceived as though the moral circumstances of society and needs of the subjects of the law do not matter. Law is law because it is the offspring of the moral reasoning of the society. So no methodology of legal interpretation by the courts should fail to bring the law to the service of society. The struggle for independence was not only or merely an attempt to dislodge colonialism from the empirical boundaries of our nation. At the core of the struggle was the crucial demand for freedom to express and apply our philosophy, culture, and tradition as a people. Such a freedom would permit legal principles, values, and concepts to be conceived and construed from the prism 
of the collective conscience of the Ghanaian people. Prof taught us an important lesson that no matter our place and position at the global intellectual table of influence and recognition, our roots and defense of such roots should remain our cardinal objective as a people. Therefore, may we stand together in recognizing the value of togetherness without necessarily destroying the relevance of individual differences as defined by culture. Welcome to this lecture, ladies and gentlemen, and may the legacy of this great African philosopher and proud Ghanaian endure. I thank you very much. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, His Lordship Justice Yoni Kulendi, Justice of the Supreme Court, our chairperson for today. Please, another round of applause. Thank you, sir, for accepting to chair this occasion for us. In the spirit of inclusion and communitarianism, we're joined by students from the office of the students with special needs who are here to demonstrate in sign language to our brothers and sisters who are impaired in the ear. Joining us also online is a great sea of audiences. Joining us on Facebook and on YouTube, please, a round of applause for them too. We ask that you interact with us and share your comments and thoughts in the comment sections. It has now fallen to the Vice Chancellor of our university, our gracious host, to formally address us. Would you please make welcome Professor Nana Abba Apia Amfo. Your Excellency Nana Adudankwe Kufuado, President of the Republic of Ghana, His Lordship Justice Emmanuel Yoni Kolendi, Justice of the Supreme Court and Chairperson for this lecture, our distinguished speaker, Professor Martin Odei A.J., Pro Vice Chancellors, Registrar, Provost, Deans, Directors and Heads of Department, former senior university officers. I see at least three former vice chancellors and uh, two former registrars. Uh, Professor Nana S.K. Biasante, my mind. Representatives of the Minister for Education. I see the Director of Tertiary and the Chief, Di Chief Director here. Mrs. Jean Wensa. President and members of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, Mrs. Joanna Dedo Jeche, the daughters of Professor Jeche, and the family members, close associates and colleagues, chair and members of the Kwame Jeche Memorial Lecture Planning Committee, the media invited guests, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the management of the University of Ghana, I welcome you all warmly to the inaugural edition of the Kwame Jeche Memorial Lecture. I'm honored to host this annual lecture, which has been instituted by the Department of Philosophy and Classics to commemorate the life, work, and enduring legacy of the esteemed philosopher, Emeritus Professor Kwame Jeche. This first public lecture marks the fifth anniversary of his passing, and as we embark on this memorial lecture, we are not only celebrating the profound intellectual contributions of a remarkable thinker, but also reflecting on the enduring impact he has had on our understanding of culture, morality, and humanity. Throughout his distinguished career, Emeritus Professor Kwame Jechi challenged us to interrogate our cultural assumptions, confront the complexities of moral reasoning, and embrace the diversity of human experiences with empathy and understanding. He challenged conventional wisdom and expanded our understanding of African philosophy and ethics, and reminded us that true enlightenment lies in the relentless pursuit of knowledge and the willingness to engage in meaningful dialogue. 
reflecting on the content of some of his notable publications, such as an essay on African philosophical thought, the Akan conceptual scheme, tradition and modernity, philosophical reflections on the African experience, published in 1997, and African Cultural Values and Introduction, published in 1996. It is evident that Professor Emeritus Professor Kwame Jeche sought to bridge the gap between Western philosophy and African thought, emphasizing the importance of context, culture, and tradition in philosophical inquiry. Emeritus Professor Kwame Jeche's contributions were transformative. His work challenged prevailing paradigms, urging us to reconsider the very foundations of how we perceive ourselves and our place in the world. At the heart of his philosophy was the, was the concept of personhood, the idea that every individual, regardless of background or circumstance, possesses inherent dignity and worth. He advocated for the recognition of African thought as a legitimate philosophical tradition and explored various philosophical themes within African context, including moral philosophy, political philosophy, and epistemology. The ideologies and concepts he championed are more relevant now than ever in this fast-paced and rapidly evolving world. As one of the foremost professors of philosophy in Ghana, Emeritus Professor Kwame Jechi inspired, influenced, and mentored countless students and colleagues through his teaching and guidance. The University of Ghana is proud to be associated with such a distinguished scholar who through his works has positioned the Department of Philosophy and Classics and the University of Ghana as a global brand in research on African philosophy. I'm happy that the Department of Philosophy and Classics is institutionalizing this lecture to immortalize his outstanding legacies. As we reflect on his work, and celebrate his memory, let us remember the power of ideas to shape our world and inspire positive change. May his legacy continue to inspire us and generations to come as we navigate the complexities of our contemporary world. I thank you for your attention. The power of his words to change our world and inspire positive change. We thank you ever so much the Professor Nana Abapia Amfo, Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana. Clearly, without recourse to any knowledge in philosophy, you would attribute the quote, the unexamined life is not worth living to our venerable prof. For now, we want to dedicate this moment to him, a spot of music, and then we hear from the gift of the occasion. Jubilee Kwa, over to you. Just one song.
watching that voice, you would have said, it is possible. And now, ladies and gentlemen, he calls us to be citizens and not spectators. I give to you the gift of our occasion, the President of our Republic, Nana Adudankwa. Eminent clergy, Justices of the Supreme Court, the former President and distinguished members of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, the Chairperson of the Electoral Commission, the Head of the Civil Service, Vice Chancellor, former Vice Chancellors, the Pro Vice Chancellors, and members of the fa Faculty of the University of Ghana, Lagos the head of the Department of Philosophy and Classics, the guest speaker, the inaugural Kwame Jechi Memorial Lecture, the widow, daughters, and family of Professor Kwame Jechi, fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen, It is with considerable pleasure and honor that I've been asked to make a few remarks today at the inaugural Kwame Jeche Memorial Lecture, an occasion that allows us to celebrate the life and intellectual legacy of Emeritus Professor Kwame Jeche, a distinguished figure in the world of philosophy. As we gather here to pay homage to his memory, we are reminded not only of his significant contributions to scholarship, but also of the continuing relevance of his ideas to our contemporary world. We can best honor him by committing ourselves to reflecting on the solid body of ideas he left behind for us to ponder and build upon. Professor Kwame Jeche was not just a philosopher, he was a visionary whose ideas transcended boundaries and resonated with people from all walks of life. His work delved into the intricacies of African thought, exploring themes of ethics, culture, and identity with a depth and clarity that have left a strong mark on scholarship and discourse. One of the central themes that Professor Jechi explored was the concept of personhood in African philosophy, as espoused in his book, An Essay on African Philosophical Thought, The Akan Conceptual Scheme. He challenged conventional Western notions of personhood advocating for a more holistic understanding rooted in African cultural traditions. According to him, personhood in African thought is not solely defined by individual autonomy, but is in fact deeply interconnected with community, with ancestry, and with spiritual dimensions. This perspective offers valuable insights into how we conceptualize human dignity and rights in diverse cultural contexts. Furthermore, Professor Jechi's work on ethics and morality 
provided a framework for navigating the complex moral landscape of our world. He emphasized the importance of moral reasoning, grounded in cultural values and norms, while also recognizing the universal principles that underpin ethical behavior. In a globalized world where ethical dilemmas abound, his insights offer guidance on how we can reconcile cultural diversity and shared moral principles to foster a more just and harmonious society. Beyond his academic contributions, Professor Jassy was also a champion of African unity and development. He believed fervently in the potential of the African continent to rise above its challenges and fulfill its promise. His advocacy for African solutions to African problems is captured in his book, African Cultural Values, an introduction, resonates well with the aspirations of our people and his legacy serves as a beacon of hope for realizing a brighter future for Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, the theme for today's lecture, the forgetfulness of citizenship, reflects the challenges we face as a global community in the 21st century. In an era marked by rapid globalization, breathtaking technological advancement, and shifting geopolitical di dynamics, the concept of citizenship is often overlooked or overshadowed by other concerns. Yet, as Professor Jechi tirelessly argued throughout his life, citizenship lies at the heart of our collective identity and responsibilities as members of society. At its core, citizenship encompasses not just legal rights and obligations, but also a sense of belonging, participation, and solidarity with one's fellow citizens. It is the foundation upon which democratic governance is built, providing the framework for individuals to engage in the political process, voice their concerns, and contribute to the common good. However, as Professor Jechi lamented, the significance of citizenship is all too often forgotten or neglected in our modern world. One of the key manifestations of this forgetfulness of citizenship is the rise of apathy and disillusionment among citizens towards the political process. In many parts of the world, we see declining voter turnout, widespread distrust in institutions, and a growing disconnect between citizens and their elected representatives. This erosion of civic engagement poses a grave threat to the health of our democracies, undermining the very foundations upon which they are built, and giving space to populist sentiments that invariably give rise to authoritarian governance. Moreover, the forgetfulness of citizenship extends beyond the realm of politics to encompass broader social and ethical dimensions. In an increasingly interconnected world, we are confronted with pressing global challenges such as climate change, inequality, human rights abuses that demand collective action and solidarity across borders. Yet all too often, we succumb to narrow self-interest and fail to recognize our shared humanity and responsibility towards one another. In confronting the forgetfulness of citizenship, we must draw inspiration from the life and work of Professor Kwame Jeche, who advocated assiduously 
for a greater understanding of our collective obligations as citizens of the world. He reminded us that citizen, citizenship is not just a legal status. It is also a moral and ethical imperative that requires us to uphold the principles of justice, equality, and solidarity in all our interactions. As we reflect on Professor Jetsch's legacy, let us rededicate ourselves to the ideals of active citizenship and civic responsibility. Let us strive to create inclusive societies where every individual is empowered to participate fully in the political process, where diversity is celebrated, and where the dignity and rights of all citizens are upheld and protected. In closing, I urge all of us to honor the memory of Professor Kwame Jechi by embracing the true spirit of citizenship and working together to build a world that is fair, equitable, and empathetic for all. I'm happy that this series of memorial lectures in honor of one of Ghana's finest scholars has been duly launched. There's a platform that should constantly provide us with important materials for our reflections and actions. And I have no doubt the guest speaker will provide us such important reflections. On this, the anniversary of the fifth memorial of his passing, may Professor Kwame Jechi continue to rest in perfect peace in the bosom of the Almighty. And may God bless us all in our homeland, Ghana, and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention. President of our Republic, Nana Adudankwa Akufuado, thank you, sir, for endorsing this great platform. Thank you for underscoring the topicality and relevance of our theme, but much more than that, calling on us to build a nation that's inclusive one that is diverse, and also one that's based on dignity of the human person. Mr. President, we acknowledge your very stressful schedule, and we know you've come here at great cost and sacrifice. Before you leave, however, we beg of you to please oblige us the position of, or responsibility of taking a photo with the widow and the children and the grandchildren. Oh, you, oh. please, the President has obliged you to stay. Please, a round of applause. What I heard from the state protocol is fake news. And so setting the tone for this lecture, we're pleased to have Ose Kranchi render a tribute in, in, in honor of the venerable prof on the Sepirwa. Please, Ose Kranchi and the Sepirwa. His Lordship Justice. Emmanuel Johnny Kulende. Remember, I was born in Betuaso. I met him when he was a young man. I didn't see him when he was a young man. I saw him when he was a young man. I didn't see him when he was a Udima fui, udima una yeyi anka, 
I'm on my five minutes in the manor hammer. I'm on a castle. I couldn't know you didn't Emeritus Professor Kwame Jechi. O Penny Kwame Odro. Any Oba Penny Ama Apia. Awe Bay. Aye oba padjuana, the dope mate kole. Ena woku no no no. Mami adjua. Akosia santua. Abna nyakua. Ena wansi no no. Nana no mama ya tia siya se. Diobe wuta chema prono. Nefiat yase fuo Osa manpana ya tuna bedini Nipa yadi ya osa ye ye Nipa se kanfwa ya kanfwa no Nipa se ntuntuma ya tuntum no Enti na ya beshe mwi Profesa ya maumo Mo moni yo Mo moni kuo Ya maumo ni yo mo 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 ni yo ya maumo ni yuko mo 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 ni yo. Yawa five minutes. Yadi kwa biya ya. Ya mani mo ni yangu ma pa. Asamu kaka na me pesa me pusi, ansa na me transi ano, na na sokole hene waha, na na umu akwa ba ubru, na eni padu doa sempa ni ebe uyo, ni akai wo, shia kuni ni eni tina yeshi amu. Ya bre, oman penyen so ti ya jom Busa ho se Na men so me kwa, se ni ya be kan fa me ho Kwa me Se ya nyi wa ya Ni ya ya bo ni ya ya fi se E ni pa bi wa wa na, ya ni ya ni da so Oman wa ni da so Ne binu ya di den fi chlo Bema wamu ye nipa Wasu mwome Ame ebi akamana 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 Kwa me wudini ne wohanam se Wa anfa wa anfa wa anfa en sisi ni pa Ibe ni mo wa anfa ya ya diye no me bi ya enfa ta Nansi wadu wa anfa wa anfa E buwa wa man En se mu ya ye ken En wu me bi ya wu chula chula ye imu nse mi ibi En ya diya ya anu nse mi Na cha se en wu me bi ya nanka ba yira En se mi bi ya nanka En chini ma ba ya din se ye be hunu we are research. A creature, a go a woman. Mo, na 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 wa hey. Me kama se me chetu. Gana man peni ni asuna be. Sepe wa ye kuta mi. Ocha na na no meja agroma koma kona intin. Sepe wa korego. Gwenji, Sojum, Benta, 
and your word Rija Tentabain. We are your Tahara, your Sraka, your Sratua, your Joker, and your word Jumuru, and if you are Prem Prensiwa, the Wuta Akasa, and the Dauru. Some men in the Nanamji Jaya, and some women will be before Tenane. So my counter my dance is a dash and some so me qua Miss Omenya and Kayenti Minya Mesomakoso A cow I mean it now Hamo It is a minute on a shia Michigan and change smon cement bottle bacco my toss I say one real will be be a me the best is that I'm the actual community, no. I'm a Kadabia. We are men so a chana dia. We no so a beya dia me ye. No we are no no biyane. If it's a bad chance, I never make a home. I'm a media. It's a matter. I'm say we change ya. I'm say I'm coffee. It's a morning as a mama. Thank you very much. It's a merry. Come money, oh, money, oh, no, they are And the beautiful art of storytelling of Sekranche and his daughter on the Sefriwa. And clearly, no study of metaphysics can never nullify the fact that five minutes in a can cosmolo cosmology is different from the five minutes in the general cosmology. We'll take it like that. Here to introduce the guest speaker, we're pleased to have a lecturer at the Philosophy and Classics Department. Make welcome Dr. Stephen Morgan. I wish I could also say my speech with a musical instrument accompanying the song. Thank you, Mr. MC. I'm only here as John the Baptist preparing the way for a great philosopher this time around. Standing on existing protocol, here we go. Martin Oday Ajay is an associate professor of philosophy in the Department of Philosophy and Classics at the University of Ghana. He obtained a DPhil in philosophy from the University of South Africa, an MPhil from the University of Ghana, and a BA Honors from the University of Stockholm, Sweden. His research interests include African philosophy, applied ethics, political philosophy, and the philosophies of liberation. For the past decade, these interests have narrowed to elaborating a Ghanaian tradition of philosophy and to bringing African and Western normative theories into intellectual contact with each other in order to counteract parochial theorizing in Western ethical and political thinking. Prof. Ajay's current academic interests are primarily twofold. First, to uncover flaws in the marginalization of African intellectual perspectives. And second, to enrich global theorizing through inclusion of these perspectives. In the latter task, he has persistently engaged with proclamations of the universal validity of global normative theorizing that recur in Western normative political thinking. Prof. Ajay works to call attention to the fact that not only the language, but also assumptions of the theories, philosophical analysis are exclusively liberal, and the relevant sides of their debate predominantly Western. Further, he argues for balance in the historical inherited image of African backwardness that informs such debates. He is the author of about 40 peer-reviewed journal articles and book chapters, and two books, namely The Paranormal 
an inquiry into ACA metaphysics and epistemology and Africa's development. Then there is the imperatives on indigenous knowledge and values. He is also the editor of an anthology of philosophical commentary on Kwame Nkrumah, Kwame Nkrumah's philosophy. Disentangling Consciousism, Essays on Kwame Nkrumah's Philosophy. He is currently preparing his third book, Empathetic Humanism, A Legal Tradition of African Philosophy. We are all looking forward to this book, and we are sure that it's going to be phenomenal. He is a fellow of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, and has held several short-term fellowships, the latest of which was fellow of the German, Re German Reference Center for Ethics in the Life Sciences at the University of Bonn, Germany. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you our guest speaker for today's ceremony, Professor Martin Oday Ajay. Thank you very much. You should um, permit me to begin by expressing my profound gratitude to you and Tidedo and your children for the profound honor that you've given me to be the first speaker of this uh, lecture series in memory of um, Emeritus Professor Kwame Jache. Um, you know that uh, Professor Jeche guided my thesis, supervised it successfully, and I think that's been said by many of um, the speakers before me. He is actually the philosophical father of our department. He taught and guided a lot of us. And we, I speak on behalf of my colleagues by using the pronoun we, uh, indeed grateful to have had the benefit of his generosity and his brilliance. And I would like to thank you on behalf of my colleagues for making it possible for his brilliance to be expressed in the way he expressed it. We are fortunate indeed to have shared a part of his life and we thank you very much. Although it is um, not so unusual for a student to be called upon to speak in memory of his teacher, it is uh, rather rare for that to occur in the presence of the sitting president of the country that he served so well. And I consider that too as a big honor, Mr. President, for being here to listen to me. And I thank you very much for coming. I must also express my gratitude to the members of my family, beginning with my wife, my best friend and my first order critic, the woman that I run to when I need for order to be imposed on my thoughts when they are in disarray. Thank you very much for coming. Um, my brother, Professor Bingaje, you are there somewhere. My adopted brother, Dr. Otinge Champong, you are there. My son, DJ. My daughter, who is somewhere listening in the clouds. I thank you all. 
Now, um, I just told Mr. President that he has actually evacuated the content of my paper. And now I'm going to, it's going to be as if I'm a plagiarist, but I'm going to ask you to indulge me nevertheless. We're here to speak about the forgetfulness of citizenship, and I think it's important to begin with what I perceive to be the conditions and the powers of citizenship in our country. Yes, the analysis of citizenship appear now on the peripheries of scholarship, on the political sociology of post-independent countries. Perhaps it is because um, the advent of constitutional democracies in our societies has brought the assurance that constitutional and legal definitions suffice to settle all questions regarding the status of citizenship. In line with this assumption, perhaps, our 1992 constitution approaches the questions of citizenship from two perspectives, I think. The first is Article 1, which stipulates the nature and the powers of citizenship. It says that sovereignty resides in the Ghanaian citizen and that all the powers of government are to be exercised in the name and the well-being of the citizens. Naturally, as long as these powers and conduct confirm to the provisions of the Constitution. This is the first perspective. The second perspective is specified by Chapter 3 of the Constitution and also by Sections 1 to 10 of the Citizenship Act. These contain provisions that define the conditions that grant citizenship status to Ghanaians. All these conditions and the rules that are specified in Chapter 3 and in the Citizenship Act regard descent and birth place and birth date and the like. I mean, for those who are automatic Ghanaian citizens and for foreign nationals who want to acquire citizenship, um, marriage and, and residency and the like um, become essential. But what do these constitutional and statutory provisions on citizenship mean? In my view, Article 1 yields at least three interpretations. Number one is that it invests the foundations of the authority of legitimate power in our democratic statehood in the citizenship of Ghana, the citizenry of Ghana. Number two, it says that the powers of the state and its administrators emanate from the citizens. In other words, that the state has no interest of its own um, except the interest of the citizens. Therefore, all the conduct of public officials, whether they occupy legislative offices or administrative offices, must be geared towards the well-being of Ghanaians. This means that all the entitlements that are specified in subsequent chapters of the Constitution can be considered not as ends in themselves, but as instruments for the realization of the visions specified in Article 1. The comprehensive powers of citizenship granted by Article 1 accords with the constitutional history of Ghana in a sense that all the four Republican constitutions begin with this very remarkable uh, power that's granted to the citizenship, to the citizens of Ghana. 
So it records with our constitutional history, but is also in very good step with prominent perspectives in the history of political philosophy. Um, its consistency with political philosophy perhaps begins at the very genesis of social contract theory. All of you, I'm sure, have heard of Thomas Hobbes, in whose work the Leviathan said that, you know, life would be nasty, brutish, and short, except, the except basically says that without the ambition to secure the interest of all citizens by a conception of citizenship that is consistent with Article 1, the conception of sovereignty of the people, the life of citizens will indeed be nasty, brutish, and short. So it's right at the beginning of uh, social contract theory. But perhaps the most, um, the most expressive uh, statement on that comes from Rousseau's social contract, which was published in 1762. Here, Rousseau says that the most justifiable conduct of state in substantiating the principle of the sovereignty of the citizen is to quote, just rule and the welfare of the people. And that any motivation of the activity of the state that is not in conformity with this strict realm of morality, as he stated, in the strict realm of morality should be unacceptable. So Article 1 is the fulcrum around which the idea of citizenship revolves. And yet the image that emerges from our constitution's identification of citizenship with a legal status which defines the relationship between individuals and the state is that of a legalistic concept, a legalistic and state-centered concept that draws heavily on liberalist and humanist principles, for instance, the principle of secularity and of equality and of equity. And um, I would not want to wade too much into the debate on the alternative conceptions of citizenship to this legalistic concept. What I want to draw our attention to here now is that these liberal and humanist principles that underlie the idea of citizenship in our constitution misaligns at times with conceptions of the relationship between persons and community that have shaped the political systems and cultural identities in the history and political sociology of our country. We should note that. We should note that this misalignment creates problems of a fit between cultural identities and national citizenship. And this is a problem that I will amplify late, later on in the paper. For now, let me state what the thesis of my lecture is. It is simply that institutional policies and practices and the efforts of citizens to realize the powers and the privileges that have been envisioned by our constitution and the statutory definitions of citizenship engender what I call a forgetfulness of citizenship. And that the work of Professor Kwame Nkrumah particularly his theory of moderate communitarian personhood, which has been mentioned quite frequently before me, can be an appropriate mechanism. It can be appropriated to correct these causes of the forgetfulness of citizenship that I would want to enumerate. What do I mean 
by the forgetfulness of citizenship then. I mean by the phrase that there is some sort of a concealment of the full meaning and the full experience and the full possibilities of the powers of citizenship that has been granted to us by the Constitution. Clearly, I'm not appealing to the semantic meaning of forgetfulness, which has these connotations of lapse of memory and inattentiveness to your environment. No, I use the term in the philosophical sense that was introduced by a German philosopher called Martin Heidegger, not because we share names, but because it's actually relevant for this, uh, by Martin Heidegger uh, in his discourse on being or existence in general. Uh, Heidegger is very dense, 600 pages, with lots of abstruse formulations, but um, we, we, what, what like we can distill from the idea of his forgetfulness of being simply is that we mistake knowledge of the existence of particular things with knowledge of the existence of things in general. Um, for instance, when we ask, um, this lectern in front of me, uh, does this thing here exist? We, um, uh, we ask actually whether um, something particular um, exists, whether a particular kind of thing exists. In doing so, we presuppose that we already know what the concept of to exist means. But the knowledge of the existence of this particular thing is not knowledge of the existence of things in general. So um, the, when we ask whether some entity in particular exists, we are not asking of whether exist, we understand existence, which is a question of the understanding of that which makes all entities intelligible as entities. We ask about the nature and the powers of that which sustains the existence of all particular things. And it is in this way, it's because of this, that I'm dragging Heidegger's abstruse conclusions on existence into our lives this evening here. Um, because I believe that there are visible signs of the forgetfulness on Heideggerian terms of the Ghanaian citizen. The forgetfulness of the foundations that sustain the privileges accorded to citizens collectively and as individuals in our constitution. In practical terms, what do I mean? I mean that we presume that these powers, because they are assigned to us, they are attainable with little or no effort. They are attainable simply by virtue of them being there. We presume further knowledge and ownership of these powers and possibilities of citizenship by virtue of thinking that they would be given to us. Because of this, we have uh, a diminished appreciation of the fundamental nature of the powers of our citizenship. And because of this, the far-reaching possibilities open to us as citizens are rather shrunken. I think there are two sources from which such forgetfulness of citizenship arise in our country. One 
is the intended or unintended conduct or omission of institutional actors, and secondly, it's the lethargy or inactivism of citizens. So before I cite examples of such lethargy and omission by institutional actors, let me um, sugarcoat the story a bit by citing some instances of the affirmation of the privileges of citizens. In other words, remarkable cases in which public policy has diligently attended to the privileges of citizenship. I believe that such inverse demonstrations of forgetfulness will help illustrate the phenomenon of the forgetfulness of citizens that I want to talk in detail about. Let me begin with the National Health Insurance Scheme, which was instituted in 2003 to provide broad-based access uh, to healthcare delivery in our country. And the recognition that public funding of citizens' right to good health constitutes a recognition of the duty of the state to safeguard the optimal health, well-being of citizens, and optimal manpower for national development. And we must thank President Kufo, who is not here, for delivering this instrument of the non-forgetfulness of citizenship. Another thing that I can think of is um, that President Mills and um, President Mahama also deserve thanks for delivering the natural gas processing plant at Atuabo, uh, probably the largest energy infrastructure that we have built since Akosombo. I mean, this plant contributes enormously to the energy security that Ghana currently enjoys and is undoubtedly an instrument of the non-forgetfulness of citizenship. A third that I just want to mention and leave it there is President Kufuado's initiation of the free SHS and his resilience in continuing its delivery in spite of criticisms of the costliness that uh, this policy involves in. The, equal, the, the vision of an equal opportunity for formal education regardless of where you are from makes the interest of the least well-off citizens of our country paramount, a paramount objective of national policy. And so, Mr. President, we thank you very much for such recognition of the fullness of citizenship. Now, let me talk a bit about the let me talk about, you see, uh, this man uh, has brought something, but I'm not looking at it. <laughs> let, 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 me, let me talk now, turn to instances of probable forgetfulness. I will discuss a few cases from the angle of the conduct of institutions and of citizens, and then I will indulge you. I begin with Parliament's passing of the proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian Family Values Bill, which now awaits presidential assent. As you know, the proponents of this bill claim that LGBTQ is alien to Ghanaian culture and to Ghanaian family systems. It should therefore be criminalized because, to quote, citizens of this nation cannot accepted. This is the position of the majority of parliamentarians of our two largest political parties as well as that of the leadership of our main institutional religions. I want to just say that the presumption of our parliamentarians and our religious leaders here is that they have unqualified knowledge of at least three facts, that they have knowledge of what Ghanaian culture 
and family value systems actually are, that they have unqualified knowledge of the sexual and identity orientations that Ghanaian citizens will accept or will not accept, and three, that they have unqualified knowledge of human sexuality um, not being like, it, 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 human sexuality not being a way of being, a natural phenomenon, but like some people are fair in complexion and others dark. In their view, sexuality is an act that can be legislated by the state. It appears to me that these presumptions accord with a forgetfulness of the citizenship of the Ghanaians that the proponents of this bill claim not to represent. Also worthy of note in this matter are the objections to the cultural and religious arguments that are advanced. These objections accept that should a bill pass into law, it would constrain the right of LGBTQ persons to choose their sexual orientation and in doing so, infringe on their constitutionally granted rights. I personally think that both the proponents and the opponents of this bill makes a fundamental point. And it is that antecedent to human rights conceptions are persons who are supposed to be the owners of the conceived rights entitlements, you see. So human rights entitlements necessarily derive from the reality of being human. The citizens who are the objects of moral concern by the state and so must be objects of dignified treatment must be identified as the starting point of all rights talk. So, in this LGBT debate, it is the nature of the citizen who is an LGBTQ person that raises a more fundamental question than the question of the rights of the person. And I think sustained reflection on human nature may reveal that some kinds of homosexual or lesbian sexuality have nothing at all to do with the exercise of the right to sexual orientation, but are natural orientations that precede any exercise of the freedom of the will. Forgetting this may amount to forgetting the humanness of some of our citizens excluding them from the fold of the talents that we need for coherent nation building would be a great disservice indeed to Ghana. Let me just now turn on, on citizens' forgetfulness on beef briefly, and then we can go there and I'll round off very quickly. Um, in your inaugural address on the 7th of January, Mr. President, 19, 2017, um, as the gentleman here mentioned, you invited Ghanaians to be citizens, but not spectators, <laughs> particularly uh, during the tenure of your presidency. In my view, Mr. President, you were asking us to steer clear of the forgetfulness of citizenship. Undoubtedly, your invitation must have emerged from a belief that the trajectory and the intensity of social and political activism in our country needs a boost 
So please allow me to elaborate my own understanding of your invitation by suggesting that you meant that we should question the inefficiencies of our public institutions, that we should, for instance, provoke Shraj to hold public hearings on matters like the environmental damage that is being caused currently by Galamse, akin to the systematic investigations that Shraj um, conducted on the violations on mining communities between 205 and 208. I think you meant that we should be more astute at invoking judicial reliefs, such as mandamas, for instance, to whip wayward institutions into line. I think you meant that civil engagement with matters of national importance should not just flare up in the media and wither away into nothingness shortly afterwards. And if my interpretations of you are right, then it appears to me that sustained engagement with the Bogubulomos alleged betrothal to a 12-year-old or perhaps a 16-year-old girl now is needed. Uh, this case evoked immediate and intense hands of our virgin exclamation, which died a premature death. And the rapid withering of the exclamation may be said to have turned us into onlookers to a forgetfulness of the citizen of the child. How do we avoid such instances of the forgetfulness of the citizen? I'll come to this shortly, but for now, a musical interlude. So, so, 
mumbio na kuni mayeye ndio Iji kamfo ayibyo kwa mchiri masu nyebyo Ana beyeya efri ya nara Ana beyeya efri ya nara So how do we avert such instances of institutional and citizen level forgetfulness of being? And I come now to my thesis, my belief that we can appropriate elements of Professor Kwame Jeche's theory of moderate communitarianism um, to facilitate resolution of some of these instances. Um, it's been stated already where the theory comes from. It comes from his um, tradition and modernity. And Jechim expoused this theory as a means to avoid the pitfalls of the liberal account of personhood on the one hand, and on the other hand, the extreme communitarian account of it. The theory has two elements. It has an ontological element and it has moral elements. What this means simply is that it has dimensions regarding what we are as persons. That's the ontological element. And then there's also a dimension of what we deserve to be and what we ought to do. And these are the moral elements of the theory. And at the ontological level, what Professor Jeche says is that personhood is fundamentally relational. What does this mean? It means simply that a person is a person in view of their interconnection with others and with their community. A person is a composite of individuality and sociality, he says. In fact, to use his own words, he says a person is a unity in duality and a duality in unity. And because of this, a commune for her is as natural and necessary as her individual autonomy. At the moral level, Jechi confers a standing on persons as morally valuable for their own sakes. They are not instrumentally valuable, but valuable in virtue of themselves being human beings. And this idea of the value of the human being um, makes Jachi's theory of personhood not only concerned with the status of personhood, but also it is a theory of duty. It imposes a duty on us because of the mutual interdependence that we must have because of our relationality, we have a duty to care for those that are interconnected with us. It also imposes a duty to not act in ways that foster and contribute to the reduction of community good. It imposes a duty on us also not to degrade the dignity of the individual being um, for the sake of pursuing the common good. These duties keeps our attention on 
citizenship alive and they are the duties of every citizen. So again, Mr. President, um, your stance that we should be citizens but not observe, observers convinces me that you are a chaste, in fact. And um, like I said, we will reserve a seat for you in the department so that you can come in now and then when you, when you retire. Because that is exactly what Professor Jachif says. He says, in effect, that a praiseworthy citizen is one who cannot be indifferent to the welfare of our country and cannot also be indifferent to the welfare of citizens. In my view, both of the ontological and the moral elements of Jechi's theory questions the assurances of the proponents of the LGBTQ bill and also provides a guide to the problems related to the symbiotic relationship between cultural identity and citizenship. Let me turn to this problem of the misalignment of cultural identity and citizenship and I will just wrap my talk. Actually, I promised a while ago that I'll return to this matter of the Gbogbo Wulomo and now a Kromos case. Undoubtedly, this case raises very important moral and legal questions regarding the marriage or betrothal to a child. The current trend of thought is that such questions are settled by relevant sections of the Criminal Offenses Act and by the Children's Act and also by the rights of the child and educational rights and embedded in the fundamental rights and freedoms of our Constitution. What I think is that beyond these cases of moral and legal status of this betrothal, if that's what it is, I believe the case also raises a very fundamental question regarding the fit between cultural and national citizenship. How do we harmonize the principles and the values of our constitution and our laws on the one hand with justified expression of our cultural values and practices on the other. The agency to address these questions arise because of the perspective that has recently emerged on this Nakromo case, which is that it is erroneous to regard the event as a betrothal in the normal sense of the meaning of betrothal because the effect of betrothal, it is claimed, implies prospective marriage and carnal knowledge with a person. But the reported ceremony merely formalized the girl's nomination to serve a deity, and that when she comes of age, she's free to leave the service of the deity, and a new virgin would be found to replace her no sexual encounter, whatever, would ever be involved. Now, if this perspective is true, one may consider it to be perfectly consistent with Articles 11 and 26 and 39 of our Constitution. You know, Article 11 integrates customary law into the laws of Ghana. Article 26 is, enables the right to enjoy to practice and to promote cultural traditions and religions. And Article 39 prescribes the integration of appropriate customary and law, appropriate customary and cultural values into the fabric of our national life. Therefore, it is not unreasonable for one to suppose a non-carnal betrothal as appropriate customary practice to secure a cherished cultural value in furtherance of Articles 26 
and 29 of our Constitution. Now, uh, my colleague and my friend, Professor Tuguba, has proposed in an interview that the right thing to do in ascertaining the conformity of such practices to constitutional principles is to, I quote, investigate the authenticity of the cultural practice and to determine its purpose and then take appropriate action. Fair enough. If after the investigation, the practice is deemed to dehumanize and injure either the physical or mental well-being of a person, then it is emphatically prohibited by our constitution. Now the question arises, what do we do when we discover a non-injurious, authentic practice that constricts the possibilities of our constitution and our laws to enable the personhood of a child and how childhood squares with that particular culture. What do we do? Would, we, would the appropriate action here be to invoke judicial remedy by appealing to the, the children's rights and the educational rights in our constitution? Or would it be to uphold uh, the practice by appealing to Article 11 and 26 and 39? These questions arise, you see, because there is no guidance on what the appropriate customary practice entails in our contemporary context, I think. And in my view, the most appropriate level to settle these questions is indeed not the level of constitutional rights and freedoms, but is at the level of personhood, which is the level of the existential status and duties from where constitutional rights are derived. I suspect that in this case as well, we can harness Professor Jetsch's communitarian philosophy in reflecting on the solutions to these questions. As I discussed earlier, Jechi's communitarianism is, is not a doctrine that turns citizens into numbers ostensibly to elevate the common good. Every citizen has a moral standing that makes her valuable for her own sake, but not as an instrument for the common good of shared relationship. In my view, on Jechay's communicarian theory, a resolution of the tension between cultural identity and national citizenship, as in Nakromo's case, is plain for all of us to see that Jechay's theory would enrich institutional implementations of the constitutional provisions and help diminish the frequency of the forgetfulness of being. I thank you all for your attention and hope that the time that you've spent listening to me has been worth your while. Thank you. Honestly, I think it's impossible to appreciate him while sitting down. What do you think? It's been a labor of love. Help me appreciate our guest speaker, Professor Martin Moday. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Oh, boy. And that was a mouthful. right from the directive principles of state policy and how you enumerate the provisions and how they all serve not as ends in themselves but as means right through to the contractualists and you show their relationship with our current situation you talk about my favorite author martin heidegger being in time jean paul sat on being in nothingness we'll continue that one later but I like the fact that he concluded by relating all these themes 
to contemporary issues that we're dealing with. I would not act as judge or jury since we have a justice of the Supreme Court here as our chairperson. Here for his concluding remarks, please make welcome his Lord Save Justice Yoni Kolendi. Thank you, Jerry. Um, Jerry did more than I, I would be audacious to do after such uh, a thought-provoking discourse. I think that it is fair to allow all of us to go process, think through, and hopefully be at the next Professor Jechi um, lecture series. Um, suffice to say, or leave you with what Prof says, which uh, he essentially alluded to, that the restricted communitarianism offers a more appropriate and adequate account of the self. In that, it addresses the dual features of the self as a communal being and as an autonomous self-determining. Then Prof. Jechis also reiterates subsequently that the view seems to represent a clear attempt to come to terms with the natural sociality as well as the individuality of the human person. It requires the recognition of communality and individuality. I think the most satisfactory way to recognize the claims of both communality and individuality is to ascribe to them the status of equal moral standing. I leave you with these profound philosophical thoughts of Professor Jechi by way of summary. Thank you for being here. His Excellency the President, I, I understood that you were knowing your intellectual appetite. I knew you weren't going to go away in spite of the pressure on your time. We're extremely grateful and privileged to have you in the audience throughout. I must say uh, to Prophet Jay that you did justice to the topic. Indeed, a true protege of Professor Jeshi as we all know him. I think he deserves another ovation. Thank you for bringing this to us and I'll turn you over to our very able MC to bring the proceedings to a close shortly so the president can return to other more pressing business. Thank you all very much and thank you. His, just, his Lordship Justice Unikulendi, please help me appreciate him for sharing this event so masterfully. And now for a very important announcement, please make welcome the Chair of the Planning Committee of the Department of Philosophy and Classics, Dr. Richmond Kwesi. A round of applause as he comes. His Excellency, the President, thank you very much for honoring the invitation and being here. Thank you very much, um, His Lordship Justice Kulendi. Thank you very much, uh, our guest speaker, for being here. My message is very simple. So the guest speaker has um, generously donated 15,000 cities for organizing these lectures um, annually for the next three years. And we've had... <laughs> We have um, Kimati Foundation also donating 50,000 cities for organizing this lecture for the next five years. Now, the department wants to appeal to everyone that we want to organize these lectures forever. Therefore, we are asking that everyone gets on board to assist in organizing these lectures annually. Therefore, if you wish to support and be a partner with the Department of Philosophy and Classics in organizing these lectures, kindly see me after we recess. And then we'll gladly you know, um, assist you to help us in instituting these lectures 
annually. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Richmond Kwesi. And for all this, the family of our late father is extremely grateful. Here to render thanks on behalf of the family, his daughter, Dr. Mame Ajua Jechi Jando. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic, please permit me to stand on the existing protocols already established as I extend a very good evening to you all. Good evening, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I would first like to give utmost thanks to the Almighty God for all of you present here and for making this Maiden Kwame Jechi Memorial Lecture, a wonderful success. Indeed, it is a great honor done to Daddy, to the philosophy department, and to the entire Jechi family. We are profusely grateful to you, Mr. President, our special guest of honor, for making time out of your busy schedule to grace us with your presence and special, very, very, very um, deep remarks and to honor greatly the memory of your brother, the African philosopher, Professor Jechi. Thank you so, so very much for this memorable moment, Mr. President, and for joining us with your family. Many thanks go to His Excellency, the former President, John Ajekum Kufo, who couldn't be here with us, but sent his representative, Dr. Edubufo, and we are honored that you were able to come. We are truly grateful. Our warmest and sincerest gratitude goes to the chairperson for this occasion, His Lordship Justice Emmanuel Yoni Kulendi, for accepting our invitation to chair and for chairing this lecture so superbly. The same goes for our lords, my lords, my ladyships, of the Superior Courts who are here with us today, we are truly grateful. Our warm thanks also go to the Ministers of State, officials of the Executive Branch, members of Parliament, the Head of the Civil Service, the Chair of the Electoral Commission, and all special guests who are here present. Thank you so very much for honoring our invitation. To our host and vice chancellor of the University of Ghana, Professor Nanaba Apia Amfu, we say a huge thank you for your great support of this lecture and for gracing us with your presence. We are extremely grateful to our guest speaker for this maiden Kwame Jachi Lecture, Professor Martin Odei Ejei, for his excellent delivery. Thank you so much, Prof. We are so grateful to you and your father, Professor Kwame Jachi Emeritus, would be very, very proud of you today. Thank you. We are also grateful to the Pro Vice Chancellor, the Registrar, and Senior Management of the University of Ghana for honoring our invitation and gracing us with their presence.
the fellows of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, including Nana Susubribi Krobi Asanti, who is a former president of the Academy of Arts and Sciences, and to the current president of the fellow, um, sorry, of the Academy of Arts and Sciences, we say a huge thank you for coming. Former vice chancellors and former registrars of the University of Ghana are also here with us. We are very thankful you could make it and join us. Our special thanks to you. Our special thanks also go to our provosts, deans, directors, heads of department, and members of the wider academic community who are here with us today, as well as faculty members of the University of Ghana. It is so gratifying to see all of you. Thank you so much. We are grateful to the Ghana Dance Ensemble, the Jubilee Choir, for their wonderful cultural performances and music, as well as Mr. Osei Kuranchi for that wonderful sepulchre. We also thank the Public, Public Affairs Directorate, the University of Ghana Computing Systems, the Security and State Protocol, our media partners, and our indefatigable Master of Ceremonies for their tireless work to make this event a success. Finally, I would like to single out the Philosophy Department for great mention. We are extremely grateful to the head of the Department of Philosophy, Professor Haske Majid, and the departmental faculty for initiating this great idea and bringing it to reality today. The chair and members of the planning committee have been absolutely amazing and we would like to express our special thanks to them. This memorial lecture has benefited from partners who have generously donated funds in support of it. Special thanks go to our five partners. Special thanks go to our five partners and their CEOs, namely Mr. Kimathi Kwenye here, Esquire of Kimathi and Partners, Dr. Razul Obin Okon of the Sidan Group, Mr. Kwamina Asumani, CEO of the Stambik Bank, uh, Mr. Charles Kofi of Cranley Resources Limited, and Mr. Leslie Nelson of Mundu Safrik. Indeed, as has been mentioned already, Kimathi Kwenye here, a former student of Professor Jechi, has kindly donated to, um, to help institutionalize, institutionalize this lecture, as well as you heard Professor Martin Oday AJ as well, our guest speaker for today. We are so, so grateful, and we know that at least, if not forever, the lectures will go on for the next five to 10 years, and then beyond. <laughs> A final thank you, really, from the bottom of our hearts, on behalf of myself and the entire Jechi family, to each and every one of you who have made it a point to grace us with your presence today and to make this Maiden Kwame Jachi Memorial Lecture a success. We leave this place encouraged to be worthy citizens of our motherland, making sure to live examined lives. Thank you very, very much. And the apple did not fall far from that tree. Dr. Mame Ajwa Jechi Jando, ending like that he would. Thank you very much for that vote of thanks. Even my father, the president, was shocked that you thanked me. My thank you is normally, is like a teacher. My reward is in heaven. But thank you for thanking me all this year. A few announcements. At the end of this event, we shall just have three photo sessions right here with you, Mr. President, after which we invite all faculty and our guests to please make their way to my left, which is to your right, for your refreshment. All students, yours is in the quadrangle, and all our VIPs, you'll be served yours specially. As we bring this lecture to a close, we ask, is our father, the Emeritus 
Professor Kwame Jechi truly did. His longtime colleague, Professor Helen Laura, has this to say. Kwame Jechi has not gone. As long as his students and colleagues remain piqued, inspired, compelled, confronted, exasperated, seeking and intrigued, he will never leave us. May the memory of our late father be a blessing to us from now until time is no more. We shall rise and sing the university anthem and after which pray the citizens' prayer, God bless our homeland Ghana and make our nation great and strong. For those 79 years you live, I ask that. Years he lived, I ask for a round of applause in 79 seconds. To you, our Father, Emeritus Professor Kwame Jechi, we say rest in glory. And now, Mr. President, three photographs at the base of the stairs in the company of the Vice Chancellor, the widow of our late father, and the children and grandchildren first. Together with the Chairman of the Occasion, please be seated, ladies and gentlemen.
the second will be with the planning committee please stand in readiness members of the planning committee let's allow them let's allow them the exclusive Thank you, family. Let's have the planning committee and finally all the members of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences. Fellows of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, you are the last. Planning committee, please come. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I ask that we all rise as the president of the Republic takes leave of us. To all our faculty and guests, we invite you to the left. To all our students, yours is the quadrangle for your refreshments. On behalf of the university, the department, and the family, we'd like to say thank you to each and every one of you. Goodbye, good night, and Godspeed. Mama, yambo, 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 yambo. Sorry to you, sorry to you. King of kings, so king, king of kings, Lord of lords, you're the greatest in the world. 